Are you ready to be drafted into the U.S. Selective Service? Well, guess what? Whether you are a man or a woman, they are now setting us up to be drafted and be part of the U.S. military. I want to break down what's going on, but what bill just passed in the House of Representatives and why this bill, for some, is somewhat concerning. Because this means now that every 18 to 24-year-old male will automatically be registered for selected service, but women could be next. So I'm going to break down what's going on in just a moment. But again, all I ask is one thing. It takes two seconds. Go ahead, hit that like button if you enjoy these daily updates. And now, let's begin. So for the past handful of months, actually about eight months, we've been hearing rumors that right now we are about to see Congress pass a bill that would make it automatic. Before men, when you turned 18 years of age, and I remember doing this you know, 20 years ago, whenever it was, I remember going and filling out this form in high school and that registered me for the US draft. Well, guess what? Congress just passed a bill, or excuse me, the House of Representatives just passed a bill, which means they will automatically register men between the ages of 18 and 26 for the draft. It says selective service is already mandatory for uh, male U.S. citizens aged 18 to 24. However, they've expanded it and they made sure it was automatic. Not that you go and you got to register yourself. No. You turn 18, you are automatically registered. Well, here's the crazy part. And this is why this is happening. Over the past handful of years, or really over the past few decades, we've been seeing uh, enrollment, recruitment, go down. Just listen to these numbers. The only, the only military group that has actually met their goals, well, they're Marines. The U.S. Army missed their recruitment goals by 23%, U.S. Navy by 20%, and the Air Force by 10%. Based off of what we are hearing, they say the current United States um, reserves are sitting at one-tenth of what they were 50 years ago when we had the last U.S. draft for selective service. So obviously, we don't have the manpower needed and this is where experts come in and say that we need more people. We need more uh, men and women to come and fight for the country or else we are not going to win a big world war. Especially against somebody like China who is getting the help of Russia. That could be devastating. But again, that's going to hurt everybody in the, in the entire uh, on earth because if the, the major powers you know, come and, you know, have a, have a war. It's not going to end well. But I want to read this article to you. Listen to this. It says, it was part of the National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, which sets out uh, the gov U.S. government's military and national security priorities over the next fiscal year. It says this year's NDAA authorizes $895.2 billion in military spending, which is a $9 billion increase uh, for fiscal year 2024. Now, the reason why we are needing more and more uh, military age men is because this is, this is the concern that there's so much stuff going on right now. There's so much, so many tensions that we have to do more. Just look at this, okay? This is what the Associated Press put out uh, the other day. It says the U.S. Navy faces its most intense combat uh, since World War II against Yemen's Houthi rebels. That's happening right now. This is their most intense combat since World War II. We've seen stuff like that for many months. We've been hearing about a potential attack on the United States here on U.S. soil. We've heard about attacks over in the Middle East. We heard about attacks on U.S. bases. Right? The things don't stop. The tensions are there. Let's keep reading this. It says... While it has been invoked, and this is what we're talking about, the, the draft, it says while it has been invoked in over, uh, hasn't been invoked in over half a century, it's mandatory for all male U.S. citizens to reg register for the selective service, also known as the military draft, when they turn 18. 
failure to register is classified as a felony and comes with a host of legal challenges. Here's something you may not know. Right now, there's a there's a uh, you know policy in place that uh, people from another country can come into the United States. They can get uh, they can register for our our military. Okay, they can enroll in the military, and once they get vetted and everything, then it actually makes it easier for them to become a U.S. citizen. But here's something you may not know: that right now. With all the immigrants that are coming into the United States, one of the provisions that lawmakers are discussing, and they haven't put it in you know, pen to paper yet, but they are trying to get military-age men, which we have a lot of that are coming into the United States, they're trying to get them into the military. Whether it's the Marines, the Air Force, the Navy, the Army, doesn't matter. right? They just want to get them in. Once they get them in, we will have more people that we can turn to. The concern though is we they have to be properly vetted. We need to make sure that they are not going to take our equipment and then cause harm to us, either here on U.S. homeland or somewhere else. Let's keep reading this though. It says supporters of this amendment argue that it would cut down the bureaucratic red tape and help U.S. citizens avoid unnecessary legal issues as well as cutting down on the taxpayer dollars going towards prosecuting those cases and that is true if we are taking our u.s taxpayer dollars and now we're going after the the people that didn't sign up uh, for the u.s draft that, that's a little bit of an issue now taxpayers are paying to go after these people that pretty much just come into felony okay goes on to say it was led by representative chrissy uh Hallahan, a democrat out of pennsylvania and passed in the House Armed Services Committee version of the NDAA in May. The NDAA advanced through the committee in an overwhelming 57 to 1 vote. Now, here's what you may not realize, and this is something that a lot of people haven't really been discussing, is that this bill passed in the House of Representatives. And this bill would likely pass in the Senate. However, there's some poison pills in this, okay? I want to read you a few things really quick right here okay let me read you this it says the NDAA is also included the largest ever military pay raise in history with a 19.5 percent increase for junior enlisted troops and a 4.5 increase for others but it's this down here it says the NDAA passed the house in a 217 to 199 uh, person vote, but it's unlikely to be taken up by the Senate. Why is this? Well, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, he's a Democrat out of New York, he blasted the bill on Friday afternoon over the inclusion of amendments curbing funding for abortion, that's one, transgender medical care, and diversity efforts. Those are some of the poison pills that Democrats are not going to vote for. It says, unsurprisingly, the legislation coming out of the House today is loaded with anti-LGBTQ, anti-choice, anti-environment, and other divisive amendments guaranteed not to pass the Senate. That's what Chuck Schumer said. He says, as we move forward with this year's NDAA process, both sides will have to work together to pass bipartisan legislation that honors and respects all who serve in defense of our nation. Go. Okay, so here's where we're at. Right now, there's too many d divisive policies in this bill that Democrats are never going to vote for it. So uh, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who is a Democrat, is not even going to put it on the, the Senate floor for a vote. That's where we're at. So even though this bill passed through the, the House of Representatives, this is not going to pass through the Senate. But... And this is the reason why I bring this to your attention because, again, do I think this, this military draft bill passes? Yes, I do. But it's not going to pass in the version that it currently sits because there's too many poison pills attached to it. This is the way that we always pass bills. It's the way we always submit them. Is the House will do a bill and they'll put some poison pills on it, hope the Senate's going to pass it. However, they never do. Senate does the same thing. They're going to pass their version of it, and then the House will pass their version of it, and then they'll talk about it, and they'll discuss it, and it'll go on for months and months. 
and eventually we'll see a bill passed. So do I think this passes? Yes, I do. But here's the, the reason why some say that it's not just men age 18 to 24 that need to be concerned, but also women ages 18 to 24, 26, 28, somewhere around there. And it is because for the, the past handful of years, the, we keep hearing the same thing is that women need to be treated the same as men, right? We Women should be paid fairly the same as men. They should be treated, given the exact same rights as men. Well, this is why Congress is saying, well, if we, if we are going to treat women the same as men, then we need to ensure that they are also registering for the draft as well. Well, one of the reasons why women were never registering for the draft before, number one, they, they really weren't allowed to really be in the military, but the second reason was, and the main reason is because women need to be here. You can't lose a lot of women because if you do that, then it hurts uh, you know, you know, children being born. And so that's why we need more women. But here's the thing. And, and again, this is just based off what, what experts have been uh, writing for you know years, is that women need to be encouraged to, to sign up for the draft, okay? And so in, in many instances, this is what experts believe is that women should be required, not encouraged, required. So previously how men age 18 uh, were supposed to register for the draft, that's what they want women to do. And, and again, this, this is still up for discussions here, but that's what they want women to do. Men automatically uh, enlisted or automatically uh, registered for the draft, but women should be required to register. Now, as far as who they draft, well, that's where things get interesting because then you would go and draft men first and in the event that we needed more people, then the, and only then they would draft women, all right? So that's currently where they stand. This is why there's a lot of discussion is because again, how can we treat women uh, as less of a person, less of a uh, you know military personnel, whatever, than men? Because again, there's some women that are gonna be better at fighting than men. There's gonna be some women that are gonna be better at shooting than men, right? They'll be better served, better in better condition, better health, everything than men. So again, that's where we stand at this time. But I just want to share that with you because even though this bill is passed through the House of Representatives, there's still a chance it doesn't pass through the Senate. So as soon as we get more information on this, I promise I will bring you all the latest news and updates. But as of today, that is what we know. So again, thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing and I'll see you guys on the next one.